Hi, I'm David Johnson, a soft pastel artist from South Africa. I've been painting now for 34 years. I'm a self-taught artist. So look at this picture, look at the detail. I've developed a unique style of how to paint with pastels, yet get that fine, fine detail coming through on the work. So I'm inviting you to come with me on a journey and I'm going to teach you how to achieve this detail with pastels. Okay, this is the picture we're going to do. It's a scene that was photographed down in Jeffreys Bay, that's in the east, uh, Eastern Cape in South Africa. Uh, it's just a nice combination that I wanted to use the water, the sand, the bushes and the sky. The sky we're going to do a little bit of artistic license there, as well as down below here. Uh, I don't like the straight lines that are coming through there, as well as the grassy, so we want, we're going to be breaking that up and uh, just making it more rounded and, and, and irregular. Uh, this is going to be our focal point. How do, you, how do you get a focal point? Corner to corner, that way, our right angle up, perfect, perfect focal point there. Right, so I pre-sketched everything. My shadows are everything in, water is going to be there, and that's going to be there. So we're going to start off with our, our sky. Uh, and practically all my skies that I do, I will put a bit of burnt umber, light burnt umber just here on the top here. Right. Okay, there's the bit over there, and then we're going to move on to a uh, ultramarine light. Uh, we need to put that on the top there, and we're putting just enough pastel on so that we can put up the tooth of the, of, of the paper so the paper's not shining through. Okay, you can now start to see the difference with the two colors. Um, I try not to mix them, I just overlap them slightly. Okay. See what's happening. Okay, yeah, I've taken all the texture away. Now I'm going to uh, make the top of my sky just a, a tad darker. So I'm used, still using ultramarine. This is a darker one. And we are putting in a little bit of a blue sky up at the top. And we rub that in. Immediately you can see we've got some nice little clouds coming up there and then we go back to our burnt umber uh, Just re-emphasize those a little bit there. Can you see what's happening? Right, we'll leave that for now. We'll come back to that. Uh, the picture's a bit on the close side so I want to give us a little bit of depth in the picture. So just here where this is falling away here, I'm going to put in a, just a a hint of a mountain range there. All right, remember colour perspective, cool colours in the distance, right, nice and blue. But they're just there, we're not going to do anything. Um, right, leave that for now. Good, now, now I want to start establishing my my, my uh, shadows. So I'm going to go to a dark grey first of all and in those shadow areas I'm just going to just skim this through. This is bush here so it's not a straight line. I want it nice and fuzzy. Just gently, I'm just skimming the pastel over, just skimming it. I just want that faint underlying um, darkness that's going to be there. We're going to work in colours up on top of this, and so you'll find that uh, that darkness will go away a little bit. But I want the shadow sort of quite darkish. Um, and then that shadow comes down and climbs over there and climbs up the bank there. All right. Comes down and okay. All right, we have a bit of shadow in there. All 
That's that portion over there. Just gently, gently rub it. Very so gently. Okay, you see, I'm softening it down. Some artists don't like to rub. They say with your fingers, you've got a whole lot of oil in it there. Uh, that suits me perfectly because I want this area to be subdued. Um, because they say the oils of the hand subdue the brilliance of the pastel. So we're dealing with a shadow area. So uh, right at the end, we put in our little highlights in it there and. Uh, that we don't rub, that will just be left all alone all by itself. Okay. Alright. Just a little here. Good. Good. I'm now going to use an olive green and this is going to be the underpainting for the bushes. Olive green, it's the darkest of the olive green. And I want you to see I'm using texture all the time. Texture, texture, texture. I'm a texture painter. Pastels is a very tactile uh, medium and all the time what we're doing is we're using our paper give me the nice texture that's coming through. Okay, that comes down. And that Always remember to on the edges of the bushes to have a little bit of a, a, a rough, edge, rough spot there so that we have a nice silhouette of uh, the bushes itself. Okay, these aren't hard round rocks, they're bushes, they've got leaves, so the edges of the bushes are silhouetted. And so we get a nice softness in the edge. And the detail is, is in the silhouette. Always remember that. Okay, I'm just going to put some of that. This is going to be my underpainting for my grass that's going to be there. Um, there's that little bit over there. And I'm going to do the same over here. Once again, I'm just rubbing it. I, I, I want to, as little as possible of the paper to shine through. I want to cover the paper, but you'll notice I'm putting it on very gently. It's very, very, um, uh, just enough just to cover my paper. That's, that's what I want you to do. And we'll come in with our highlights now after it. Right, there's sort of more or less my underpainting there. Now, just to get a bit of perspective, uh, we're going to uh, just put in the sandbanks using a, a, a lightish burnt umber here. Uh, burnt umber number nine. And most of the pastels that I'm using are Rembrandt. Once again, just to, not, not too much of a heavy hand, I'm pressing just enough so that there's just a tad of the paper will shine through. Uh, we'll give it a rub now and it'll uh, take all the paper away. All right. Okay, I'm going to rub that. Just gently, gently. Reflections with your right loss. You've got to sort out all your colours here, so those are going to be reflected down in there. So you might, uh, uh, you don't want to be careful that you land up with that being over there. So uh, that's how I do reflections right loss. All right. Okay. So if I have a look at it now and I decide, hang on a sec, um, I can go just a tad darker on that uh, on the shadow, 
So I'm just going to put a little bit extra in there. Rather too little than too much. Just That's how I normally do. Just put a little, little bit on, you have a look at it, you say, hang on a second, no, I need a little bit more uh, until you just build it up. Okay, all right. All right, we, we're going to use the exact same greens here as here, but because of this uh, dark color here on it, it will automatically uh, 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 shadow all the bushes over, over this particular spot here. Right, put some more over here. There we go. All right. Okay, that's good for now. Right, the next thing that I want to do is Here's my focal point here. Um, wherever you have a um, uh, the, the part that you pastels are at its best when they put on neat, right? So here in the focal point, we're going to try and keep our colours almost as, as, as pure as possible. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of here and there, a little bit of a um, an overlap. Okay, I'm just starting with with, a, with an orange there. We're going to lighten it up afterwards, but just so it gives me a nice. Uh, it's got, you'll see what will happen later on. It'll just be nice and, and warm and fresh. Good. Now, let's have a look at our bushes and at them. Uh, what I like to do is uh, uh, put a bit of warmth in first so that uh, that, that warmth is going to come through. Uh, essentially, it's green there. So I acknowledge that, but you'll see just by putting in a little bit of warmth where the sunlight is hitting our bushes, we'll find that it, comes be, um, it, it just helps with the um, uh, it, displaying the light that's falling on it. So just, I just skim it over, over there as well, skim it down. Okay, there's some over here, here. Just nice and loose, okay? Just skim it, skim it. I'm just, uh, stay away from this shadow area, stay away from it. Right, that comes down, and over there. Now we start to build up. All right, so we've done that there. Uh, and now I'm going to use a little bit of uh, um, burnt sienna as well, just to um, ready colour, uh, nice contrast with your with your greens. Okay, it's just that mottling effect that you're going to get coming through there. Uh, put quite a bit of it over here. All right, let me down there. Some of that coming through here, and I'm going to bring it down there where that grass is going to be, and so over here. Right, now, back to our, our green. So I just want to start to establish a little bit more shadows in there. So I'm just going to back and rework them ever so slightly. Just put them back. That's what happens all the time. It's building and pushing, building and pushing. All right, so but it's always, you always try and put on less in the beginning. And afterwards you can, um, you can adapt it nothing. But when you put on too much, uh, if, if you use this color solid on here, uh, it would become very, very, very dark and that green would just be fighting its way through all the time. So you don't, you don't want that. I can put some of that in here. That's fine. Over there as well. And we're going to put some in here as well. Right. Okay. Some over here. In the bush here, uh, if you look very carefully, there's little bits of colour which we, we, which are like a, a Mars violet. So here I've got a bit of Mars violet, so now I'm, gonna, I'm skimming it. Eh? All right, I'm just skimming it over there, all the way through, skimming, 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 skimming. So we, it's going to be land up with this little kaleidoscope of colours um, that make for a realistic bush. Right. Um, but be careful of same old, same old, same old. Good. Right. Now, now I'm going to start building up my bushes now and I'm going to move in with a bit of cinnabar green. This is started with the highlights, but we must be careful to leave behind these colors that we put there. It's pointless putting them there and we just uh, uh, um, 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 smother them. Okay, the biggest problem I find uh, with, with, art, with doing art and that there is that we very, very quickly over highlight, right? So you must be careful just to leave behind those little bits of um, 
uh, dark areas that are in there. Okay, so let me lost a little bit there. I'll come back and sort that out. Right here on the edge here, I see I'm pushing now, I'm pushing it out, and I am using the texture of my paper to give me a nice frayed edge there. See that? Okay. Now I can go a little bit darker. Okay. Right, uh, I, I don't get myself tied up um, with trying to give every, get every bush to look like as it is there. It's just, it's just a, a general uh, feeling that's there, a little bit of, um, you, you, I just find that when you try and copy a, a picture too much, uh, it, you, you tighten up and you don't want to do that, you want to be nice and loose. Um, uh, what I start off sometimes with a picture and what I finish off is sometimes very, very different. Just little happy accidents happen and then you suddenly find that you're off on a different tangent. Alright, so, alright, now, please, this, what we're actually using here uh, is, this, is this green, okay, it's a, a cinnabar green. And I'm working it in now on top there and I'm slowly stopping, but you see I'm leaving behind little bits of colour that are in there, okay. The shadows will only come a little bit later. Right, this is cinnabar green. Right here, over here, we're going to put it quite hard and dark. Can you see that bit over there? This is going to be part of my focal point over there. So, excuse the neighbors' dogs. Good. Uh, we've got our grass over there, so what I do is I'm just going to skim it across. Right, with grass, I have a formula with grass. It's colour of the grass, then the, then the shadow, and then the highlight. Okay, so we got this is the colour of the grass. Right there, you see I've, I've, I've almost bowed it a bit there. So my bushes now are needing a little bit more uh, uh, oomph in them, so I'm going to go back to that uh, olive green and I'm just going to put a couple of extra dark bits in between there. And I'm using my pastel, nice and see a little sharp edge over there, I'm just using that there now and I'm uh, working it in, in between. This bush here is slightly, it looks like a um, bush has sort of lost its leaves and stuff in that there. So I'm just going to darken it a bit there as well. And then up here we have a dark spot over there. Many a time when I do a picture that I'll start, what I start off, as I said earlier, I start off and get something completely different. Uh, what we have in uh, pastels especially, it's much like uh, watercolors, you have these happy accidents. Something will happen and it'll just change the whole course of your painting. Uh, it didn't mean it wasn't intended, uh, but painting is, all a painting is is an illusion of color. We're creating a, a three-dimensional picture on a two-dimensional piece of paper. And to do that, to do that, you use your colour, you use perspective, um, all of those things to to uh, give you that depth that, that, that comes through. 
Alright, now what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to make sure I've got no paper shining through. Alright, so that I've got a nice decent dark background there. Basically too much paper there, I don't want to see that paper, it must be gone. Right. our cinnabar green and now we start to give ourselves those little final highlights that are coming through there. Right. All the time I'm just skimming it, skimming it, skimming it, skimming it. Okay, it's good to hear you've got some um, dark shadow. Always make use of light and, uh, and, and uh, dark. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I am Bringing that across there uh, to, and you can see a little bit of it there. Sometimes I exaggerate it. Same with these bushes here in the foreground. Uh, just see the bushes coming up like it there. We're going that way. Right, come back to this over here. All right, so you see that bush runs around like it there. Okay, we're going to do something similar there. Cross into a colour called uh, a raw, a raw umber. It's, a, it's a, the lightest of the raw umbers, and we're going to just create almost a ground cover type of effect. That's there. Just skimming it, skimming it, skimming it, skimming it. Breaking up, I don't have the shadows that are over there. Um, I'm giving you the effect that it's ground cover. Okay, very nice. Okay. Right, just let the bushes down below here. Right, let me get back to my sand. Back to uh, a bit of a number 10, and I'm just going to skim it over, even behind little bits of that orange in between there. Okay, soften that right down. But it's nice and warm, and okay, that's what we want. Okay, this is focal point. We're talking about this here, this is what we want to be. We're going to be concentrating on. Good. Um, I've now put that. I'm going to go to a lighter cinnabar green. See that area over there? I'm going to put a little bit more highlight on top of that. And then it'll still be more uh, as well again. So this is sort of like also like a ground coverage type of thing. It's not a high bush. Uh, but it's. Okay. So what you have is an embankment that's coming down and this bit's going up. chance to stand back and look but you should start to see uh, what's actually happening there. So the part of the bush that is closest to the light source is going to be the lightest 
right? The sun's coming through there, and as it goes around, then it, 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 it goes back. Okay. So now we go. And so now we go. Now, I'm going to very subtly use this grey and I'm going to start just pushing it in, in between um, those bushes. See, I'm using the texture. See, I've used the texture there. I've just skimmed it through. I've just, uh, the pastel is almost falling out of my hand. Right? And now I'm creating those little shadow areas that's inside the, uh, the bushes. But the reason we use using a lot of colours is that if you, if you study the photo very carefully, there's a kaleidoscope of colours, all sorts of different little bits and pieces, and it just uh, it's a matter of just building those in, and uh, uh, and that's what actually creates the realism in the work. Now, I describe my work as impressionistic realism. Uh, I don't like painting photographs, uh, that's just not my style. Uh, I just believe a painting should look like a painting. So, um, okay. Right now, in this area here, I'm using the same colours, and you'll see now as I put it on top of that dark grey, what happens is that it's all automatically grey. Okay, so that this bush here is in, in shadow. Uh, and I'm putting exactly the same colour on top here, I'm working it in on top, and we're getting the effect of shadow. Now, we, step, we go a step further now, and we're going to just put a little bit more um, highlight in the, um, uh, the part of the bushes that are in, in the sunlight. So I'm using a bit of a, uh, what we would call a deep yellow, deep yellow. And on the side of the bushes that are catching the light, we just want to just emphasize that just a tad, uh, so that it just gives it a little bit more of a, a 3D effect, right? It shows the edges, the tops of where the branches are, where the top leaves are. Okay, there's some more over here. Right. Okay. This whole area here that we're doing now, we will be uh, um, softening it, taking all the detail away, because we're talking about that over there. That's what's very important. Right over this side here. Um, 
Now you might just say to me, David, I don't see any yellow there. I know there's no yellow there. Uh, but this is what we call artistic slices. And if you did those colours exactly as they are over there, your painting would look dull. Alright, so I'm just pushing it up, giving it a little bit of extra there. Um, that's what I find so fascinating with art is you've got you the you're, you're the architect. You can do whatever you like with a picture. You can change it, do it, whatever the case may be. Uh, that's that's what it's at, and that's what I find. I get so uh, excited when I have to do things like that. It's just uh, it's just wonderful. Okay. All right. I just see over there. I'm just going to put a little bit more over there. It's almost like a pathway. So I'm actually going to title this picture Pathway in the Sandunes. Right, now I'm, I'm going to go to a slightly different colour now. This is a, um, uh, a yellow orca. Um, sorry, gold orca. Not yellow orca, gold orca. And I'm just going to push that in amongst there and that there. Just softening that down there. Can you see that there? Just pushing it in between. Like over here, we've got a, a little tree that's coming up there. We're going to just put it in there. And you'll see that colours also just in between over there. I'll put something over here. Same story. In, put it back, put some more in, put it back until you get the right balance. Art is all about contrast. You're either doing a tonal or a or a, a complementary opposite. So I use both. Use both in my work. All right. Let's just make this nice and dark over here. So that's dropping down in there. Right now, here we have an interesting little spot here. We've got this coming up. I'm going to just um, go over there. And if you can just see. It actually comes in there, it's almost like a little S, okay, because this bank is throwing a, a shadow across there. Okay, so that comes over here. A strong bush there. Over there. Okay, now we, we need to, um, you can just see there's some sand that's actually in, in the shadow there. And um, for that I'm going to use a raw umber. Alright, can you see it's a different two different but it's a shadow colour. Right? So we're going to do that in there. So it's a little embankment that we've got coming down here. We'll soften it just now. Um, but we've got to just give it that um, look of sand that is shadowed. Now, in, within the bush itself and at there, let's just use a little bit of artistic license and I'm going to just also once again give you an, an illusion of a bit of sand that's coming through. 
All right, here we go, up against coming underneath the uh, bushes. In fact, there is sand over there in that, in that photograph. Uh, but this is shadow, right? So we're going to do shadow first. And bring that down. Uh, that'll be fine there. And now butting up against that, I'm now going to move into a light orange. Okay, light orange. Now this, this is sand that is now in sunlight. Good. All right, so here we go. So we're starting to give the, the angle that I'm pushing the sand up is giving it the illusion that it's, it's rising. Okay. All right, another thing I want to do is just to break up, it's just all these straight lines. You see that bush in that there? I want to bring this now in front of that there. So I'm going to create a little bit of sand coming across like that there. So that we pull this forward and we, we push the rest of the back there. Always doing that in my art, breaking up in layers and layers and layers. You want to push something away from you, put something in front of it. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, I want to do with um, this, this tree over here. It's a very, very dull tree in that there, so I'm going to use a bit of a, a, an orange, uh, what they call orange light. It's a, uh, it can be, just give me some nice illusion. I know that I'm putting it forward and I'm putting it in front of that shadow. sharp edge on my pastel there so that we have a, an effect coming through the branches etc okay. so the branches start to uh, right I, I actually don't like this dark there's, there's too much dark there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a bush here and press it a little bit hard and we'll just break up that darkness a little bit there some more um, highlight in that bush, that tree there. So I'm going to go back to a bit of the light cinnabar green. Okay. Right. Let's see how we do. Now, I want this grass here, I want to put some grass in there. So remember what I said is, um, it's the color of the grass, which was that green that we used. Um, yeah, I'm just going to re-establish it there. Lost it a bit. We want to break that up, you know, it's too, uh, too structured. Right. Okay, color of the grass. Uh, then the highlight and then the shadow. All right, so now I'm going back to the, the dark gray that we used and I'm just Holding it horizontally, I'm just touching it, picking it, creating little bits of shadow in the grass and that thing. See? Okay. I'm always dabbing it off. Right, that's the thinking. I haven't taken away that green that I put there, but right. it's still there. Right. Okay. Okay. Right, then I'm going to use a bit of uh, deep yellow again. Pastel flat on the side, and it's just a flip motion, just a flip motion. That's a bush that's over there. Come back to that. Okay. Now, I want to break this up and I want some lines that are sort of going in towards my, my focal point there. I'm going to use a light orange here 
and in between those, um, right there, see what I'm doing? I've got my pestle, I'm using the, the edge of the pestle, I've got it there and I'm just lifting it slightly, so, it's not a, so I'm not getting a line out of it, I'm getting a nice broad I'll be using the pure orange in it there. Um, I'm this here. I'm giving you the illusion that the light is hitting the sand, sand within the bushes here. Completely, okay. All right. And then we can bring that across the way. Okay. Getting some dark back into the bush, which we've actually over highlighted it. And I'm going to put some deep yellow on top of that. Now I start to play around with highlights and see my nice shadow there. I'm using now that shadow behind there to silhouette my bush. And here I start to uh, indicate the size of the leaves and what we're at. Here we have another little bush over here that's half the size of the other one. That's fine. Right, and then this still is still too, uh, uh, too dark for me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put a little bit of a, a bush here. Um, it's sort of getting a little bit of light coming through onto it. All right, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just breaking up that a little bit so that it's, that it's, it's not there's this big dark hole that we've got here. It's much like we've got over here. Good. Um, okay, back to the orange. And we're going to... Okay, can you see what I've done here? Yeah, we've got a nice straight line there. Now what I've done is I've broken it up and took it, take, taken it that way. Right, let me just see where we're at now. <clears throat> uh, okay, oh, I'm liking it, okay. Right, this here needs a bit of highlights on it there. Going back to deep yellow, and I'm just putting that on there. And we're just touching up here, and we're just touching it up there. Um, try and preserve your, your shadow areas in the bush, just touch it up here and there. Okay, that comes down, that comes down there, you see how it's got a uh, highlight on it there. Alright, let's do a little bit more over here. Taking through over there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of orange into that. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. Okay, let's just establish that. Get the sand back in these little bits of growth that's sort of in between on the sand there. So I'm just trying to re-establish that there. Okay, so this comes down. So it's a shadow that it's like an S effect that we got there. Let's change it there. Let's try our um, burnt umber. And just, just, just to just, just dabbling it in, dabbling it in, leaving behind little bits of, of the dark colour which will then represent little bits of, um, of, of vegetation that might be there. Good. Okay. All right. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Right, so let's just go back to that grass here. Hold my pastel flat to the side. I'm 
just flicking it up, leaving behind little bits of um, little bits of uh, the dark there. I don't want to just completely take it away. And it's all a question of silhouetting one against the other way, all the way through. Silhouette, silhouette, silhouette. And we're using texture, all of that as well. All right. Now, all right, so this, this area here, uh, we, we want detail, but we don't want detail, okay? I want to soften down the detail. So uh, I'm going to just over-highlight, over okay, just over-highlight here. Bring some bit down across there. What I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just gently, I'm just touching it, almost dabbing my fingers, and I'm just killing that, that that detail a bit over here. Right? See what I'm doing? Killing the detail over here, all the way through. Right? You with me? Okay. Okay. We have a little new view. Um, I'm going to be working more on this side here, so it felt a little bit better if I position the camera this way. Um, I've done a little bit of work in between uh, from the last uh, cutoff. Uh, first of all, what I did was I just broke up these little little bits of uh, um, sand that was there, just put some bushes in between. I put a little bit of uh, blue-gray in there in between there, just to give a, a little bit of subtle detail uh, so over there. I uh, redefined my bushes and these ones here as well as well um, and then I started on the water um, uh, to do the water you've got to stand straight in front of your uh, in front of your work and you've got to look at and you've got to bring those colors down everything that comes down there it's got to come down all right so I've just basically put in some very rough uh, uh, rough colors in that there just to give us an idea we do a little bit of refining on that just now um, and now what I want to start to work on is I've finished this part of the painting. Now what I want to start working on is actually um, uh, defining this part here. This is, as I said, this is my, my focal point here. So let's just get on with it. So what I'm going to use now is a uh, shrinker pastel. It's a, 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 a sort of a, a lemon yellow color. Um, and we're going to use this now. The softer the pastel, the better the highlights, the better the vibrancy of the pastel. The harder the pastel, <coughs> the harder the pastel, the easier it is to draw, uh, but the, 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 it gives a more of a dull, a dull effect. Uh, so, right, what we're going to do here is this little area over here, as I said, I want to actually um, uh, develop that there. So, I'm using my pastel. And I am just skimming it over. See that there? Just skimming it over there. That's a lot more yellow than what is in the picture. That's fine. I don't mind that. This is artistic license. And now can you see this is leading us in that way there, over there. I'm going to add a little bit on this side here. All right. A little bit over this side there. Uh, just a touch here and there. Or over there. Um, and now you can start to see, compare that to the rest of the picture. This is like... Uh, um, shouting at you it's really great uh, effect that you got there all right i'm going to put a little bit over here as well all right just a just a touch over there also just helps to define uh the shadow area from the, the other area there all right um, i'm going to do a little bit over here just silhouette some nice bright color up against that shadow over there <laughs> Now, those colors have to come down, right? See those, those colors there. There's my little markers over there. So just coming, just behind, below that, see that there? I'm, I'm putting some of that color in there. And then on this side here, um, it starts to run about, see there's my, my dark mark there, it's over there. So that starts to reflect over there. So it's not reflecting the whole top of these, it's just whatever's there, 
is there. Whatever is there is there. Okay, so that's where it stops. So there's just a touch of that yellow coming through at that point over there. All right, the other thing too with the um, with the water, uh, with the reflections, I have rubbed it, right? And you tone it down. So water always tones down your, your reflections. What very bright colors go, go down a bit, dark colors go gray a bit. So it's, 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 it's a thing on both sides. So just always remember that. Never ever go for uh, mirror images. Please, you sucker for punishment. It, is, it has to be the neck. Everything has to be exactly, exactly, exactly as it's there. Um, and you don't want to do that. All right. Okay, now I can put a little bit more of that color in there. And I'm using a raw uh, burnt umber, number nine. Um, that's not as bright as that there. So, see, it starts over there, and we just bring it around that way. All right. Okay, rub it, give it a soft rub. Right, water has no texture to it. So with water, I take all the texture away. Any time you've got texture in water is if there's foam. You can see or a stream rippling over rocks or a waterfall or whatever the case may be. That's when you get a, a texture in the water. Right. Okay, now I want to get back to this tree. Remember what we said, this is our, our uh, this is all our focal point here. Um, and and the, this here is kind of dull, isn't it? Okay, compared to that, I wanted it that way. So that your eye goes in here. All right, so I'm going to put some little bit more detail in this little bush over here. It's not in the picture, it's color. And once again, it's an artistic license. So we're just playing about, it's, this is cold gray colors behind you. I'm putting on a nice warm color uh, up against it. And what you see now is it starts to come through there. Okay, I like that. All right, now I'm just going to do my little tree trunks once again. I'm just going to re-emphasize that. So you just have dash, 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 so in other words, um, there's foliage in between, so you see the branch and you don't see the branch. All right, bring it down. Okay, so this tree's actually catching sunlight, all right? Shadow's coming down through there. All right, now I'm going to go back to my little pathway here, and now I start to zhush uh, it up. All right, look at that, okay, nice. Okay. I've taken the pathway more than what it is in the in the in the painting because remember the title of this picture is the pathway through the dunes. So we, um, we we that's that's what we're emphasizing. Right. So here the pathway has a little bit of a shadow cut, cutting across it. That's fine over there, and then it comes out down below here. Right. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. All right. That's lovely. Oh, I love it. Okay. Now we can just put a dash, a little bit of it over here, just to. Um, as the embankment going up, it helps to tell the eye that that's part of the uh, topography is moving up. And we just put a little dash of sand in between. Okay. Also helps to break up the solid colors and that's there. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. So the pathway comes down here. You must also think logically. If people are walking down here, um, the grass gets trampled, etc. So I'm going to push this grass back here a bit. Uh, I'm going to push it back in. Uh, so there's the pathways coming through there. All right. Okay. And then just what I'd also just like to do is that um, the grass again, I'm just going to re emphasize it. Look what I'm doing. I'm just holding my pastel back to the yellow again, holding my pastel flat on the side, and I am just flicking it up. And we're going to break up that little bits of sand and that even more. Right, it's just a hint, just a hint. And by doing this, you can see how they've got that, just get that little silhouette effect that's coming through on the shadow on that side there. Right, you got that. Okay, so this here, we can put a little bit more detail on that there. Just, to, you know, I'm using the texture, right? Texture, 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 all the time. All right, same over here, same over there. Okay. Right, happy there. Now I'm going to move down to the water edge, and we are. Going to come back to this color here. This is back to my bit of the original color that we put on there. Okay. It's that same color. Uh, always, I always start sand, and invariably I use this color 
just to start off with. Now what I started doing, I'm going to start refining the water edge. So I hold my pastel flat on its side and I press quite hard. So I cut, cut into that uh, reflection color that's there. Look at that there, see that nice and sharp. Nice and sharp. So I'm pressing harder down on, the, on that side there and I'm just taking it all the way through. All the way through, all the way through. Look at that. Oh, isn't that nice? Okay, right, same over here. Okay, you can do the same story over here. Pressing hard, pressing hard. Right, there we go. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Okay. Alright, now the next thing we've got to look at is on your water edge, where the sand is touching the water, the uh, the um, uh, the sand is wet, right? So uh, we need to just sort of um, emphasize that and then we can start to get the final sort of real, realism that we're going through. For that day, I'm going back to my uh, um, uh, um, gold orca and, and I'm going to just, I'm holding my pastel. See that little ridge I've got there? See that little ridge? I'm holding my pastel there and what I'm doing is I'm just on that ridge there. I'm running that like I'm pushing a little car, right? Look at that there, see that there? All right, so we just run that through along the edge there. I'm leaving that there. It's a little, it's a little, little island of sand that's there. It looks nice. Okay. Happy accidents. Remember I told you about that happy accidents? There they come. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I'm just skimming the paper folk, just I'm just catching the texture of the paper. I'm just skimming it across. That also helps now because those two colours are very close to each other, so it also just helps to bracket that away. Okay, I'll give that a very gentle rub. Gentle, gentle. Alright, now you must also think logically. You haven't got this water, people are, well, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a thoroughfare, uh, that the sound, the uh, sand itself is not going to be flat, 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 alright? So um, we're going to create sort of like little bits of um, uh, footprints in that there, and I'm going to go into a Mars violet, and I hold my pastel flat on its side, like that there, and you see the little ridge I've got there? I'm going to start using that. And what I start to do is just to break up that sand. Just give you that illusion of possible footprints and things like that. There, right? See that? Same on this side here. Here and there you're going to, there might be a little bit of a twig or something that's there as well. I'm running this colour now right up against that gold orchid that's there. Love Mars Violet. Oh, it's a lovely colour. All right. Now at the same time, what I'm also trying to do here is I'm starting to create a sort of a sloping down um, so that your uh, the sand is slightly elevated above the the water right we're getting somewhere right coming back to this uh, gold orca again now i'm going to just here and there i'm going to just uh, this could be debris this could be whatever you like okay um, maybe old leaves or something there over there um, and we just start to break that up. Same on this side, yeah.
you, what, what essentially I'm creating is little shadows in the sand itself. Uh, and a shadow is an artist's friend. It helps you to depict your topography, the way things are, 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 are um, laying in it. Right, can you see I'm just starting to get that little, little bit of a, uh, a downward slope in that there. I'm going to use a bit of orange, light orange, so, um, and I'm just going to create here yeah, in between using my sharp edge over there, and I'm just going to start breaking that up again. All right. Actually, see those little bits of pieces that they in the, in the sand next to the shoreline in that day. This is an interesting little picture. Um, it, it, it lends itself to a lot of possibilities. Um, you could put birds in here, seagulls, uh, herons, uh, that type of thing. Africa we have a, a bird, uh, it's what we call an oyster catcher, black with a nice red bill, he would work very very nicely in here, but whatever you do, you must just make your sure that your size perspective is right for the picture, um, and so you, you, know, you can actually ruin a picture by putting something in that's a kind of a, a little bit too uh, too big for whatever you want what to depict, okay, so uh, size perspective, very, very important, just breaking this up a little bit over here. All right. Um, right, just remember there's no neat lines in nature. You don't have um, garden services coming to cut the hedges and the bushes and stuff, and that. everything's higgledy piggledy. Right, so I'm going to use the same colour here. I'm just going to put a little bit of highlight in the tree on the right hand side because that's the size of the, um, the sun that's coming from. You leave that left side, that's shadow side. All right, okay. I'm going to put a little bit of this in there as well because the, the light is actually hitting that, uh, that area there. All right, now I'm going to just zhush up that this little area a little bit. It's nothing, there's no colour like it anywhere at all there. But what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm using a, this was made by Venus, it's a fluorescent orange, um, uh, um, but it's a lovely bright, bright colour. So what I'm going to do over here, just over here, just remember once again, this is my uh, focal point over here, I'm just going to put a little bit of this in there. What is it? I don't know. It just, it could be a bit of vegetation or something like that there, and just that little bit of extra um, brightness that you get there compared to that there. You see the difference that we've got there. Right, I want to come back now again, and I want to just put a little bit more of this in there. Just to balance it a bit. And you can see my action that I'm doing. This, uh, that, that bush is level. It's, 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 right. right, I am not putting this up here, right? That's uh, um, it's, it's too bright up there. Alright. The vegetation's growing over the top of that embankment that's there. You can just put a little bit extra in there. All right. Okay, I'm liking that. All right. Now, what do we do now? Uh, you have to decide at this point uh, what you're going to do with your picture. Uh, are you going to leave it just like it is? Is it okay all by itself? Or does it need uh, a little bit of extra? Uh, and what I thought of doing here is because it's a, it's a pathway through the dune, uh, what I thought of doing is perhaps having some people walking down the path, right? Not that way, because then they're walking out of the picture, but coming this way. Now this is, the, uh, all right, so you, you, we have to have something with a bit of bright clothing, something that's going to cap, cap, capture the, um, uh, the, the eye, um, and you have, to be, you have to be very careful that 
we don't, um, uh, in other words, if you don't put a person that size there, uh, it's going to be out of proportion to the rest of the picture. So we've got to decide how big is that person going to be, right? So the smaller they are, the bigger the dune becomes. The bigger they are, the smaller the dune becomes. Can you see that relationship that we've got coming through there? Okay, right. So uh, we have to decide now, should I put them there uh, or should I put them up there? Uh, both would work. I'm actually going to go for up here. I'll tell you why I'm going to do that there. Because they here are out of range of the, uh, the reflection. So I'm going to put it up here and it's more in that little sort of um, uh, focal point area that I was talking about. So we, we need a nice bright sort of color. So I'm going to go for a, uh, um, a, a red color here, um, a permanent red. All right, two people, one people, three people. Um, okay, uh, well, let's just see how it goes. All right, so I'm having somebody walking down here. Um, it, it would be a, um, let's say it's a lady and her little, and her uh, little kitty. All right, holding my pastel, getting a nice sort of sharp edge on that there. And I'm working that down. All right, it's silhouetting quite well enough there. Yeah, she comes down. There yeah, she's walking. All right, what else? Uh, is she big enough, small enough, big enough? Let's make her a little bit bigger. All right. Oops. Um, yeah, I think that's about nice. Um, Kitty, what are we going to do? Um, let's use a, a white. All right, here's a little kitty walking next to her. No, that's not good. And this is what happens in painting. Folk, you try something, it doesn't work, but you try something else. All right. How's that breaking? Okay. Um, right. Um, I'm using a pastel pencil here. Pastel pencil. Uh, light brown sort of colour. The darkness underneath the How's that looking? Oh, no, now they look like they're walking away. It doesn't matter. Maybe put a bit of shadow in there. Uh, where's my grey? Oh, let's use some Mars Violet. All right, so there's lights coming from this side. We have a little bit of a shadow thrown in that way. And a bit of shadow thrown in that way. How does that look? Ah, oh, a little moss. Right, I'll go back and refine that. Um, that'll do for now. All right, so it just gives me a bit of perspective. So they're out of range of my reflection. Um, now you can also go back now again and say uh, with the red, you can just maybe do a little bit of a darker. This is a bit of a uh, burnt sienna. Right. Um, Shadow's not good enough. Right, the shadow will climb up that embankment there, that's on that side there. All right. Okay. Shadow on the left side of that dress. And we're basically there. Um, I'll do some little finer re refinement, refinements just here and there. Um, and then you'll see the final product of the picture. But essentially what I've told you that is how to actually construct the picture. Let's just run through it again. We have a, a focal point which is here. You can see that it is, um, your eye is attracted right into that there. Everything else sort of subtly is uh, the, the sand banks coming through, the bushes coming down. Everything is pointing towards my focal point. Uh, water, what's the scent? Remember what I said? Uh, you must rub it, and there must be no uh, texture left in the water. Um, uh, and you're playing around with light and shadow. There were big dark shadow areas there, which I then wanted to just break up with a little bit of um, detail within there. So it's not a big black hole. And um, we have our um, uh, um, 
shape. So that we, you, the, you're not under, you're under no illusion that the land is going up, that is coming down, and everything's there. And to me, I just think that's a pleasing painting. The only final thing that I want to do uh, is to go back to the sky up at the top. I'm going to make it just a little bit bluer. So I've been able to inspire you. You will see that uh, uh, pastel is a very fast medium. I think all in all this picture took me uh, about an, uh, an hour. I'll probably take about another 50 minutes just doing the final touch-ups and then I will have an uh, exact image of what we've done. Um, and then we'll uh, um, just polish it off for you. All right. um, it's an illusion, right? There's, I haven't painted a photograph. All I've played on is I've just played with light and shadow. I've used the texture of my paper to give me the detail. And it's just a matter of playing around with dark shadow, cool against light, etc. And that will give you your final, your final product. Whoops, you see you've got a dirty hand there. Um, I'm just kidding. I always, always have a wet cloth handy. Um, all right, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Uh, and then I'll come back and just show you the final uh, picture on its own. Thank you. Righty, let's finish off. If we look at the, you'll see the changes that I have done, they're quite sort of apparent to the eye. Let me explain to you where and why and how. The mountain on the left, that little peak there, it just was a bit too sharp for me and kept putting my eye across and it, it, was, it would then detract it from my focal point. So I decided to slope it down and then just tuck in a little bit extra there in the centre. Can you see how that I brought that through? And it just, to me, uh, the whole painting just sits better, it's better composition, and the uh, mountains have helped us to give us a nice distance in the picture. Yeah, it's that sort of atmosphere. In the bushes itself, you will see I've darkened the area, re-established the dark areas there, re-established the highlights. That tree on the right-hand side there, I actually cropped it down. I felt that was too big and prominent. I used a light orange number nine for the highlights. The trunks and branches that are in shadow, I used a Mars violet. And then the areas where the branches, etc., are in sunlight, I used a burnt amber number 10. I used that same color in the pathway as well. You can see I've lightened that up as well. So, and then tidied up the bushes and ground cover either side of the pathway. So I just tidied that all up nicely and it's, uh, it's working very, very nicely. A nice, strong focal point. Moving down to the water edge there, you see how I've broken it all up. I've subtly brought in little points of sand protruding into the water. They're like little arrows and those little arrows are pointing up to my focal point. It's a technique I use often in my paintings. I use it to just enhance and lead the eye into what you're wanting to talk about. And if you are having branches or tree trunks or whatever the case may be leading out of the picture, it pulls the eye out. So you don't do that. You always have everything working in towards your focal point. Uh, the foreground is done with minimal detail. Uh, you can see I've created a little bit of a gully area, uh, sort of like a, an erosion area leading into the water. Uh, I've used the Mars Violet for the shadow areas, gone back to the light orange number 10 number nine sorry uh, to uh, to to put those highlights in and just create that unevenness in the soil but you keep that area to minimal detail it's just just enough to get away with uh, but if you're going to go playing around with those areas there it's going to detract from your focal point what i'm left with here what i quite like in the whole picture is that we have a nice s composition coming through so if you take the sand in the foreground it leads across to the left to turns the corner and comes back right over above the water and leads up into the pathway and back left again. So the whole eye has been pulled all the time back into the painting itself. Uh, the um, uh, sort of shadow areas in the on the left hand side I've just re-established those slightly and then also the highlight areas on the, uh, the uh, right embankment there I can see I've actually just re-established those as well. The colours leading from the path down into the sand in the foreground there, uh, you can see how I've just subtly brought it down and it, it sort of blends away. Uh, but it's nice to actually do that because you tend to be able to, uh, it, it's just for one going into the other. You don't want this abrupt change from one side to the next. Um, 
so there we go. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it, enjoyed watching it. Uh, if you want to try painting it, uh, at the end of this demo, I will have a material list, the pastels that I used, the paper that I used, all of those things that's for your, for your benefit there. Uh, I will mention that if you are ever in a situation where uh, you put on too much pastel and you're finding that you've lost the tooth, in other words, the, when you put the pastel on, it's not gripping. Uh, you can use a fixative, I uh, must be honest with you, I do not like the conventional art fixatives that they use. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the chemical composition there is very, very severe on the painting. It leaves it with a, a very rough sa sandpaper effect and you will find that the picture is just is basically destroyed. I, I do not use it at all. Uh, you can try the alcohol, I haven't used it personally but it seems to work and then uh, you otherwise use a hairspray that has minimal oils in it. Um, I use uh, hairspray uh, and it works beautifully. It's better on your lungs. You don't have these sharp chemicals that, are, that you're sitting with and breathing in. Uh, this is my job, so I've got to try and keep my area as healthy as possible. So enjoy it. Have a look at it. Go through it. Uh, contact me if you like uh, via my website, uh, via my Facebook as well as you can contact me just with my email address. All those particulars will be at the end. And enjoy. Cheerio for now. Bye.